they keep it they keep it in their uh, wardrobes mm -hmm. and in uh, and for, for some they would um, request that in, if they die mm. they be wrapped with the ram dress okay. we have seen this as, yes. a of, as a way of invoking Allah's blessings mm -hmm. but yeah. again again uh, uh, wrapping somebody with a ram dress can only be meaningful mm -hmm. if the person's record was or was clean before that Okay. You know, in other words, you ha one has to ensure. But it can be also important. Yes, yes. Yeah, well, well, because it is from Mecca, it is blessed. It may carry blessings from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Okay. But the individual Muslim must make sure that his or her records are clean before moving from this world to the other world. To the, to, to the other world. Okay. Allah Alam. Yeah. Uh, Doctor, the discussion is very, very interesting. Uh, well, what we do right now, dear viewers, is to, to take a short break. When we come back. We'll open the lines for you so that you can call and ask questions, but into we're discussing and other things concerning Hajj. Now we'll take this break now. When we come back, inshallah, you know, we'll give you that opportunity. <laughs> Welcome once again there viewers to this interesting program and now what we do is, is to open the lines for you to call and ask questions pertaining to what we're discussing today which is Hajj. The number you can call for those of you staying outside the country is 00220-437-3910. 00220-437-3910. For those of you inside the Gambia, the number you can call to contribute or to ask questions is 437-5905, 437-5905. We ha we've opened the lines and we can call and ask any question. And uh, inshallah, doctor will be here to answer your questions. Now, doctor, to move on, uh, before we have our first caller, <laughs> I wish we had the ram here. Yes, to demonstrate and it. Yeah, and you have, to have uh, you'll have uh, taught us how to how to tie it or mm. how to use it. Yeah. But uh, nevertheless, you you explain to us how to use it because yeah, most it people uh, going to market this year would like to know that. Yes, you know that they're always in two pieces. Yeah, two pieces. whether for male and for female. Mm. For a female, theirs is easy because they are allowed to show it. Mm -hmm. And you know, because of the sensitive nature yeah. of, of, of women mm -hmm. and the you know the the, the, the parts, mm -hmm. they are allowed to show it. And uh, uh, it is uh, so like a trouser and a, 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 so a rope, a rope. Mm -hmm. they put it on. And then for them also, they have their, their head cover, mm -hmm. unlike men. The men will be the, the men's heads will not be covered. No hat. No, no, no hat. And for the men, mm -hmm. it's not so. Two pieces. Mm -hmm. One is wrapper. From the navel to the uh, uncle, uh, to the ankles, mm -hmm. they tie you tight it very strongly because if you, unless you sometimes you need to use uh, a special rope to tie it very strongly, mm -hmm. otherwise you can fall down. Mm -hmm. And then the f the that's the lower part. The low, the upper part. You take the upper part and also uh, wrap it on on, 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 you know, from the uh, how to call it, the, the from the back. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you wrap it. You have part of it running. You know, through the right, right, right arm, mm -hmm. while the other part is already co covered. Like you have a big wrapper, you wrap it okay. around your body, tighten it around your body like this, okay. uh, and then and that one is easy to handle okay. because usually, and it's also the the part that is covered is not part of the private part. Okay. The groin are the upper part, and okay. that is why, the, sorry, the, the lower part, okay. and that is why that one you need to be tighten very carefully. Yes. We take this first call. Assalamu alaikum, caller. <coughs> Bismillah, welcome to the program. Actually, can you adjust your voice a bit? I'm again in the clearing. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm thanking God for telling us about the Hajj. Thank you very much. And it's very much indeed needed for people to be sensitive. 
Yeah. Because we have seen people go to Magadha because of the because of the sensation only. Yeah. I thank Allah. I thank Doctor also how he's emphasizing and how he's speaking for people to know. Yeah. What will send you to Magadha and what to do? Yes. And this is putting back on them because they know it. Yeah. Thank you very okay. much for your contribution. It's yeah. very interesting. Yeah. I think he was just trying to explain how uh, mm. elucidated and how interesting and clear the points you explained are mm -hmm. and how you're trying to emphasize on some of the issues. Yes, yes. Which is very, very true because yeah. we all know that Hajj is expensive. Yes, Hajj is expensive. Uh, and it's very demanding also. Yeah, yes, very demanding. So if you have to go for Hajj, mm -hmm. undertaking which is a component of Islam, mm -hmm. uh, you should be equipped with uh, all the requisite knowledge at yeah, home yeah. Uh, before you embark on this very, very interesting yeah. journey. Yeah, I'm sure Gambia, uh, in what happened in many countries, many Muslim countries mm -hmm. in the Islamic East, and I'm sure uh, we will want the rich that level of uh, development is that they, ki they keep permanent hatch camps or hatch cities mm -hmm. or hatch towns. So when people, shortly before people leave for Mecca, mm -hmm. they will come and s station, they will be stationed at the hatch city or the hatch camp for one week or several days, four or five days, mm -hmm. for them to go through the, the different of the Hajj. Mm -hmm. And a lot of sensitization programs. Mm -hmm. So by the time they go, mm -hmm. they are well aware. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we're well aware of, and in addition to this, also the travel with guides. Here we do travel with guides, uh, highly motivated and uh, quite, con quite um, um, uh, how to call it, enlightened. Mm -hmm. And they, they always do their best. Yeah. But like he's saying, that is exactly the point. Mm -hmm. You need to know what you're supposed to do and when. Mm -hmm. uh, if you miss these sensitizations, mm -hmm. uh, while you are there, keep on asking people. Mm -hmm. And you have your own national guys who travel with you. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, also the Saudi government, they have the muftis are stationed everywhere, mm -hmm. religious scholars. Well seen. You see them in, in small, uh, how do you call it, uh, uh, boxes like police, the, the police box that you see in the streets, mm -hmm. sit, you know, uh, containers, sitting waiting for anybody to come and ask any question. Mm -hmm. Well, language might be a big problem, but uh, most of them uh, will speak either English, French, Arabic, or uh, let's say Portuguese. Uh, you may hardly see somebody who speaks to you, Wolof or Mandinka or Fula or Jola, mm -hmm. but for that one, you can definitely mm -hmm. make the u best use of the, the guides that DIA is sending with you. Uh, so um, um, we must know what we should do, what, how, and we must be prepared. Okay. It is not a tourism uh, journey. You have to suffer. You have to, s and particularly the days of the Hajj, like what you call the Ayam al Hajj, mm -hmm. from the eight of Zil Hijjah to the, the there are three days, very hectic days, followed by another two or three days of Milan. Uh, generally, you have six days. These six days periods, even if you spend Makkah in one month, you can spend a whole month enjoying. But the moment these dates started. You get yourself, you find yourself in a very, very hectic business. People will get lost sometimes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, they will lose their way. Uh, people will um, uh, uh, be e extremely exhausted mm -hmm. because hack is by definition a very hectic business. Okay. So it's not a luxury. Okay. Uh, and if you know this, mm -hmm. you know what you're going for, mm -hmm. and you're prepared to cooperate with the, with the career and the guides and the mission, mm -hmm. I think you will enjoy your stay back. Okay. Yeah. I may to understand also that when you're taking this ihram, mm -hmm. watches, rings, caps, mm -hmm. undershirts, underpants, you remove everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I don't think it will be necessary for you to remove the watch. But of course, the the the, the underpants, anything which is sewn, you have to remove. Everything? Everything you have to remove. Uh, otherwise, you may be taxed, you may be fined. And the fining is for you to slaughter ihram and give it to the poor. You should have to remove everything. <laughs> <coughs> you know, like, <coughs> again, this is another way of demonstrating the fact that this business, this mission, is not for luxury. It's not for enjoyment. This is a hard work mission, you know. Okay. We have another call, Dr. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, we take this caller now. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Uh, what's up? Doctor? Well. Yeah, I want to ask a question. Yeah. You're welcome. Like, I have never been to Mecca for Hajj. You've never been there? And to Mecca, yeah, I've never been there. Okay. 